this episode, we're going to be talking about what social media managers have absolutely had it with with their clients. And so usually I talk about from the client perspective, what so with with small businesses need to know about social media, but now I'm going to kind of reverse it a little bit. What are social media managers struggling with when it comes to their clients? So what is it they've absolutely um, have had it with in terms of what their clients are ex, you know, expecting? And so the bridge is how do we go ahead and connect those dots? So ideally, when you're looking at that correlation between a client and a social media manager, social media provider, there are some things that don't really quite connect. And a lot of it um, is both sides. They both assume that they understand the process and they both assume that they're both on the same uh, page when it comes to the brief of the project. So um, clients might say, okay, well, obviously the, uh, the thing is, is that we need to understand that um, uh, this social media post is are supposed to actually bring me in profit. It's supposed to sell my product or service, and I need that to happen now. Where the perspective of a social media person is like, oh, well, sure, yeah, absolutely. And we're going to go ahead and do all of these steps so that you can get that notoriety, writery, and they say it right, notoriety, and also um, be commonly known for this particular product or service. But it's a slow burn. It's a slow burn to trust, like, and know you, and then eventually buy from you. So those two thoughts are not on the same page. So here's a couple of other things that I wanted to go over with and give you like some real examples. So clients who uh, micromanage every, every, let's say, every aspect of the social media strategy. Now, these are some of the, the things that I've garnered and gathered from other social media managers. So clients who micromanage, um, yeah, it's because they're not being taken on the journey. So again, not this is not about a blame thing. Um, what social media managers, I think, need to start to sort of catch up um, to and understand that they're also the client's educator. So you almost have to go into those meetings. I love Loom by the by you know just to mention Loom. Loom is an app that you can record the screen and you can show yourself up in a little bubble so that you can explain exactly why you're doing what you're doing. So you might go into an explanation and say, this is our social media content so that, so that we can go ahead and achieve this particular goal. So a lot of it actually weighs on the, the more that you give the education to a client, you're actually going to get less micromanagement. So that's kind of the solution of it. So, you know, the, the reason is they lack in trust or understanding, and then the solution is to educate the client. You educate them, let them know why they're doing what they're doing, also delegating them tasks. What is it that you want to achieve, getting that clear information. Sometimes it's a 20-minute phone conversation. You have to gather most of that information as much and as soon as possible so that you can actually produce a lot of things and you can also split test it so if the client's like no no no, I really want you to go this way meanwhile you know how social media works and what's going to register and what not register sometimes you have to go ahead and say hey we're going to do in a little bit of an a b split testing if that's all right with you we're going to go ahead and put your ideas against some of the things that I think will do really well as well and then together we can see what the end result is that's another way to do it Another question that, or not another question, another scenario from clients is that, uh, let's see, clients who do not provide enough information or direction with social media content. Now, this one's a little sticky because they need to take the time to really brief you in on what they want to achieve as a goal. Um, it is your opportunity to say, hey, let me introduce um, some content pillars. Th these are the things that we should be talking about frequently and featuring your expertise in this product or service so that <laughs> so that we can go ahead and get this type of um, uh, drive and you can start to you know look at look at some of your content not only on Instagram but LinkedIn and see what kind of you know reciprocity are people commenting are people engaged and usually that pathway to be honest and I really wish it wasn't the case but if we get more videos, that will actually solve that problem. 
So if they have the unclear expectations and goals, getting them in front of a camera or an iPhone or some sort of smartphone and film what it is that they, you know, features and benefits of their product or service, then we'll get there um, uh, sooner than later. And it, it is, uh, you know, you have to kind of go through that thorough onboarding process to gather that intel from a client and also spending some time with videoing is going to be really, really helpful. So um, another one is clients who expect instant results from social media efforts. Absolutely. That seems to always be the deal. So misunderstanding social, social media algorithms altogether from a uh, client perspective is happens more often than not. Sometimes, this is always my favorite, when a younger family member will go ahead and say, hey, um, this is not how social media works. <laughs> it's not, no, you, you know, and then they say all of these particular things that will sort of dirty up and muddy up the waters when it comes to what your direction you're supposed to do. So again, more education, more backpedaling. Um, I've often said, especially if it's a, if it's like a, a business, you know, you, you're, you're hired by a business and then their son or their daughter has told them social media is not like this. And I often throw my CV at them and say, or my resume and say, oh, really? Have they done this? Have they worked with this company? Have they? And I mean, almost saying like, listen, I, I, I love ideas, but experience and understanding um, this particular science is a bit different from dancing on a TikTok. There is so much more nuance and stuff there. And also too, they're talking to you from a point of view of their demographic. Most likely you are working with a client that is not their child's demographic. So you have to put that all in perspective and you also have to, you know, sadly enough, provide education on social media best practices so that you, you know, you look like you know what you're talking about. This is an ongoing battle. One of the things that I always say for a lot of the social media marketers out there, if there's a reoccurring, like I call it a bug, if there's a reoccurring bug and why a client is not buying into your process, write a full length article um, that is addressing that and what also to expect. What does the slow burn look like? What does the solution look like? And what is in over time, what is it that you can expect by producing this type of social media? If you write it as a blog, you can actually, when this comes up, and I've done this a lot, is that you just sort of hyperlink, hyperlink, um, just grab that link and, and put it into an email or put it into somewhere. It's like, yes, you know, we've addressed this before. We're, we're really, you know, our heads, our heads and minds, our mindsets are wrapped around this concept. Here is an article that we written back in 2020 <laughs> to tell you and, or, or even update it. Just let them know like, yes, we absolutely hear you. We understand that's a concern. This is a full length article of what our findings are in regards to this topic. So it really is about putting it back on the client so that they understand they're in full control um, with their thoughts and the, and also too, they're feeling validated and heard. You already wrote this long blog on it. And that's something that you definitely want to keep pushing forward. Clients who don't understand the value of social media marketing. Now, this happened a lot in the beginning of social media um, in general. And sadly enough, it's still having to be proven here in New Zealand. Um, I say we're about four years behind. Some people may, might say that they're more than four years behind in terms of understanding social media. So we're having to get um, a lot of people that need to buy into it. And all honestly, it's lack of education and awareness. This is another great way to go ahead and do that, you know, 500 word article and talking about the value of social media and literally position it as like well, social media marketing, um, not understanding the value is like not understanding the value of business development. This is the 2023 version of business development and we're using social media as a tool for SEO and for a place for people to find you. So that is one direction you can take it. Certainly whatever your criteria is and what you your, your speciality and your focus is, uh, maybe you're more of a video uh, content coordinator that takes clients on a journey. Whatever your position is, go ahead and put it from that position. So you might be a video content creator. 
go ahead and put it from that perspective. Our perspective here is that we do social media to provide a quick, fast um, SEO mechanism so that you can be found earlier. So that's what repetition is and that's why we do it. Um, what has always put things in the forefront or things that actually accelerate that process is video. So it's about, you know, explaining what that efforts are, what is the, um, you know, that's the investment in social media marketing. You will get a return on investment depending on um, uh, continuity, uh, regularity, and how often do you use those search keywords that will actually bring them in focus. So there's a lot of different factors, but certainly that's something that we should consider and look into. So number six, Clients who expect social social media to solve all their business problems. Um, yeah, so that is there there might be a day, and I think that we've all probably gone through this where there's not a bad day, there's a bad day in sales or some sort of meeting where people come out and they literally look at the social media desk and they're like, I'm gonna bash them because I <laughs> have put so much effort into this, and the reason why we fell is because our social media is not successful. No. So depending on that conversation, and by the way, I mean, let's talk about toxic conversations. They can be toxic conversations from a workplace, a colleague and a client and or client. And when that happens, then we could probably do another show about firing your client. And there are certain ways where um, you can quietly, um, it's not quite quitting, but I always say like, give them a reason to self eject. So a lot of the ways that we do it, just a real quick way, is to just tell them, hey, next month we are raising our prices. I'm giving you a 30 day notice. Here is a new price list. Let me know if this suits you and we'll go ahead and put in the billing process or you know, we'll set up a subscription free for you to start up again. And if they say yes, awesome. Now it's more palatable to work with them. If not, then awesome, they're gonna self-eject and perfect. You don't even have to have that um, conversation about leaving them behind. So it's just clear and cut. And that's one of the ways that we, how we um, either elevate a client to pay attention to what they're doing in a true collaboration. You pay more, you pay attention more. Or they're not interested and they're just gonna be blame gaming you, then hello, here's your button to self-eject and it usually works. So um, yeah, so unrealistic expectations, a lack of, of, of uh, comprehension and social media management usually goes down this road. So let's go on number seven. Seven, clients who don't prioritize social media and don't pri prioritize timely feedback and approvals. This will always slag off <laughs> the, the whole process. Like it really brings everything down. And so what happens when people are looking at the ROI and what was our performance looking like and da 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 This happened a lot with me in a very big company that was, um, that did a lot of film-based stuff and social media promotions. And this got us every time because the brief and the conversations were too long and people were head scratching going, well, Let's just change it. So the changes, the, 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 um, the changes in creative, which should not be more than two, by the way, it shouldn't because now you're putting the whole process, you're keeping that to be longer than it should be instead of going, all right, because social media is a flick and let's find out. We understand what our social media keywords are, what our directive, what we want them to do, what the action is that we would like them to take, and let's fly with it. But if we're going like this and having these long meetings about, you know, scratching our heads and going, oh, let's try it this way. I'm not sure if I like the creative. I don't know if I like the color scheme. I'm not sure. If you're doing the I'm not sure camp, you were never, ever, ever going to have a really successful, engaging post. Like you want it to be something where they're passionate about. And this is the other bit that I think that a lot of people don't understand, especially clients. If you thwart and you stop the creative process from your social media person because you have a better idea, you're killing the creativity muse that's in the room. And I know that sounds very airy-fairy, but there absolutely is a creative element. And to have trust in that social media social media marketers so that they can fully visualize and envision 
what they want to do to take it off and it's in alignment with actually what you want to do, let them run with it. I can't even tell you what a learning curve this was for me. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm strategy. Let me go ahead and insist myself and in with, you know, some of the juniors in this role and let me tell them how it's going to be. And that's absolutely the wrong thing to do. You need to have them fly. Like take they're 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 on the tarmac, they need to fly with it. And then in the post-production part and see the how it worked, that's when you go ahead and go, all right, this really, really worked. Or let's tweak this and see what happens next. Because at the end of the day, social media is not a clear formula. It's a formulation to launch, find out, look at the results, and then adjust according to what people liked. That's it. There's, there's no straight cut formula. And if you're in a smaller country or a smaller market, you're not going to have data-driven information that's going to get to that people. So I'm, one, I'm in the, one of the most toughest markets on the planet. I'm in New Zealand when I work with other companies here, other larger, medium, like medium-large companies here. And the thing that they do not have is data to prove that things actually uh, work <laughs> as opposed to any other country or any other state in the U.S. We can actually see like, okay, so kind of like, you know, we can drill down on what actually works for this subset of community, for the subset of people. We only have 5 million people in the entire country here. Um, that is the, the equivalent of like the city of Los Angeles, the city of Manhattan, like that's it. So we don't have a lot of data. So a lot of it's just real serious. Seriously, it's just dart throwing and hoping that we get it. We have an idea. I have a lot of experience where I think I know where it's going to land. And it's a hit or sometimes it's a miss. It's about that repetition. So that's that's primarily how you need to do it. Um, pretty much on all, especially if you're a small business, you need to keep throwing those darts and seeing what you hit and seeing what you miss. So a client who doesn't prioritize social media is going to quickly burn out the campaign. And that's just how it is. Nothing's going to really come with it. So the lack of understanding and, and understanding the impact of those delays is going to really be crucial in terms of the success of the campaign. So educating the client, as soon as that starts to happen, like literally get on the phone. Sorry, millennials. <laughs> Sorry, G Gen Z. If you're working with a client, you need to get on the phone telling you they're probably a Gen X and you need to get on the phone with a Gen X person and tell them how it is because an email is going to be glanced at and thrown away like we all do. All of us are guilty of that. You need to have that verbal that uh, conversation and connection with a Gen X or above. They need to understand. So that's one thing that I say, get on the phone, get on the phone, let them know what's going on. They need to connect with your voice and the reason. So that's something that I really, really put out there as advice. Okay, so number eight, clients who don't respect. Okay, no, that's, oh, clients that don't respect social media guidelines or policies. Ah, okay. So this is talks about a little bit more about social media best practices. I had one of the CEOs I worked with here was, was also very much in the, used to work in the pharmaceutical company where they would bombard people um, this is why GDPR actually probably happened with Cialis and Viagra emails saying, get it now, get the best price now, and just illegally went ahead and went through it. I'm giving you this as a paraphrase type thing. Now, there's things that we're supposed to do in best practices with social media that we shouldn't be doing, a, a, like maybe even writing a false um, testimonial. That is not a best practice for social media. Instead, if you don't have a testimonial, maybe you're a young company or you don't have enough or people don't know you so they can't give you a testimonial, then this is when you talk about features and benefits. How does it correlate in the prob solving the problem? So if it's a skincare product, um, I worked with another company that was amazing, but no one knew about the product. It was a dead sea salt of uh, uh, exfoliate, skin exfoliator. And no one knew how soft it made the skin and how easy it was and how hydrating it was. So we kept drilling that information in over and over and over again. And that's where you need to land with this. So getting, um, uh, you know, having that client be aware that if it looks dodgy 
or something of it is not actually going is very sus it's not not going to actually land right then that's when you're actually preventing a client a, a potential client from purchasing or buying into that service so be very clear establish clear and social media policies as soon as sometimes we i'm mean, like well that's another thing we have to do i mean the first time it does it write a total social media policy of what you should and shouldn't do provide education social media etiquette best practices stick it in a long blog you've done it once and then if another client starts to be there where they're dodgy you can go up oh, I, this is when I need to share my social media policies. You can also put it um, an, a, in your contract. I, I do um, a Canva decks where we show people how the process is going to be. And at the last page, we'll actually also show like, okay, these are our links for some of our policies. So they're always there. And also too, we can change them up when we need to. So, um, you know, where you weren't giving a late fee for somebody who was late on an invoice, now you are. And we're just, we just revised that into our, um, our blog page or our, our, our page that's not actually visible, but we're putting it in the contracts. So keep that in mind. It's so important to go ahead and it's going to last you the length of your business. So don't worry about like, oh man, I got to write this huge thing about our policies. Just one and done. It's all good. And you can always correct it, polish it up. I mean, heck, you can even have ChatGPT write it, right? You can just have them like write the policies for you. You can edit it. Boom, you're done. Like that took all of maybe 30 minutes. Like it's not that hard anymore, which is great. Okay, so number nine, clients who don't allocate enough budget or resources into social media marketing. <sighs> This is big. And generally speaking, this happens like in the beginning of the year, people have like all the money in the world to do it, right? Or they have an idea of, okay, this is my marketing budget. I'm going to go ahead and start. And then people have this sense where social media doesn't really cost them anything. It absolutely does. It costs them a couple of things. It, you have to determine through that conversation, all right, are we doing an ads thing? Are we, are we, are we applying Facebook ads? Are we doing any, a TikTok ads? What are we doing? Are we placing you visibly in LinkedIn and do we need to drive ads to that as well? So you can actually have a rundown of what those lists are, including what your baseline fees are. So one of the things that we do at our company is that we don't, we don't charge hourly, we charge them monthly. So there's no hidden costs or no like, well, why... Why, why am I $1,000 more than what we talked about initially? And I got this huge invoice. No, no, no. It's easy. We actually put people on a subscription. So there's no, and it's always on the same day. It's linked to a credit card. It's all good. Um, we do do some invoices, but rarely. Aside from all of that, we have a very clear understanding of what the budget costs are. And then anything outside of those parameters we go ahead, if we're going to do a Facebook um, ad thing, they, they have to run it through their Facebook campaign so that their credit card is attached to that, not us. And also, too, it's great for transparency. I get into another podcast about how dirty and dodgy when I came here, a lot of people were actually putting the Facebook ads on their page, charging people $1,000 for a month's run on, on ads, yet they they never really shared the transparency you know, space where how much actually was spent and what were the results. They just sort of wrote it in an email. So a lot of people do deal with what they call cowboys over here. So it's like, you know, a lot of people just running with it and not being ethical. And, you know, with clients, especially the smaller market, you have to show up correct. You have to do it. So one of the things that you need to do is also be very transparent with what the budget's going to look like. How is it going to look? The whole deal. So finally, number 10, clients who don't collaborate or communicate effectively with the social media team. This happens. Oh, I'm so busy. I got it. You know, oh my gosh. And then they either travel or they are they're stuck in a project or they're too busy and they, oh, I can't. I'm so sorry. And it's like, Oh, now there's, ho it makes me laugh here in New Zealand. There's always a holiday. Like it's just not like this weekend, it's just not Easter weekend, but there's, there was, it was also holiday on Friday and um, there's Easter Monday. So there is two additional bank days 
that, and then people will take it off because, you know, their kids are on holiday, uh, you know, spring break. So it's, it's all of that. And so a lot of people, and this, I, this is also why I love New Zealand. They prioritize the life and the works behind them. But because of that, I'm too busy. I'm sorry. I can't collaborate with you. Wait until I come back. And that is often what the case is. So what I usually do is I produce content two weeks and uh, ahead of time. And that has been approved, processed and done. Um, and then we run it. We keep on trying to like, okay, we're on two weeks ahead of time. Let's do three weeks during the end of the year, because here in New Zealand, especially it's becomes, it's actually summer. December is a summer month. And people are out enjoying the sun. They're nowhere near where their office is some of the time. So we have to produce anywhere from four to six weeks in advance. So you know what I mean? So it's it, depending on your market, depending on your client, you need to be as far um, enough where you actually have approvals and everything so that if they fall off the mark, oh, I'm so busy, don't worry, you got yourself covered. So this is... Yes, it's a big thing that we complain about with clients, but everything that we talked about, all of these 10 pieces are absolutely manageable for us to like take back and run with it. So really it's about mastering what uh, our social media um, content and also do account management. So a lot of this has to do with account management, how we position them. And yes, we can have a cocktail and we can really talk about some of the clients and some of the doozies we've heard and some of the interactions we've had and the inappropriateness of all of things. But you know what? So is business. Like there's always those situations. So really it's about you making it the best that fits for you and your life. Um, one of the things that we really love about working, um, I think, in the side of the business, especially with Social Global Grind, is that we understand because... New Zealand is a very precarious place, especially this year in terms of weather. So if we have a good day and you want to not open your computer, please go outside and enjoy the day. That's exactly, exactly what you should be doing. Just know that things are due on Thursdays. That is our only criteria. So if you're not working on a Monday or a Tuesday, I'm not going to get bent out of shape because you're probably doing the right thing and you're probably addressing, to, you know, the sun uh, uh, really concentrating on your body. I always say body first. This is from Kate Northrup. I've talked about her a million times. She has a philosophy for women, especially in business, body first. And that's what we try to do. And so you can actually implement body first by doing some of these things. And I think one of the things that's not included on here, but it should be, is uh, making boundaries with clients. You know, sometimes clients can actually take a lot out of you, text you all the time, and phone you and ring you all the time. And usually, sadly, it's my generation that's doing this. Like Gen X are, are notorious for actually calling you and texting you all times of the day. And that's, that, that is just a minor thing. You can actually go and tell them in the beginning, hey, this is our office hours. If you text us at this certain time, um, know that we'll probably get to you at the next business um, day and we'll, we'll definitely, you know, within 24 hours of the business um, scope of what our hours are that we're working, we're going to go ahead and get with you. It is what it is. And other businesses actually have operating hours. You need to have it too. You need to shut your phone off. I've shut my phone off completely. I've had some crazy interactions in the beginning when I didn't know how to manage clients. I had some crazy interactions with clients that were just calling all times of the day and just being crazy. I've turned it off. I've turned off my phone. I'm like, no, can't do it. I was stressed out. I was, uh, the anxiety level was through the roof. And I think that's the other thing, right? We need to manage our anxiety. We're going to create this gorgeous business for ourselves and really, really um, design it um, you know, just life design it one and see how this actually is going to work with us. Um, and we need to take time and really realize what that looks like and what our, um, uh, you know, boundaries are. And if you don't have one in place and you had a long client, long standing client, and they do call you at all hours and they do have anxiety producing communication styles, you can absolutely go, Hey, just to let you know, we're implementing 
business hours and it's from Monday through Friday from this and this time. Uh, it's not to say that we're not working. It's just that we have, those are our client business hours. So, um, uh, and just say that. So then, you know, there's, you can always, I mean, I always say like, well, you know, we, that's just one side of the business that we have. We have many sides of the business for a successful agency, including creation of content. So we need to be really focused on that time. So there's a lot of ways that you can actually frame it. Um, you, you never, ever want to tell your client, oh man, I just had such a really bad week and I had to go and just disconnect from my, from everything and go to the beach or go walk or just do me or go shopping. They don't want to hear it. They, honestly, they don't even need to be privy to it. Just let them know that your solid answer is this is our operating business hours. End of. That's a complete sentence. That is a complete sentence. So know that. So don't feel um, anxious or you need to give a reason or this is why I couldn't answer your phone. No, no, no. This is our operating business hours. So, and you keep doing that. And if, again, you'll find out if these are the people that you need to self-eject. Do they need to be, if they're going to go ahead and, and, and want that sort of full access to me, what does that cost? What is the monetary dollar amount that that would actually be okay with? And it's usually really high and the client usually does not want to pay that. So that is a great self-ejecting mechanism. If you're cool with it and you're like, yeah, you know what? I would totally do that for a thousand dollars more a month. They have access for me, then tell them. Like if you want this type of access, if you want that, you know, that level of service, we do provide it, but it's this amount, then please do it. Um, there's a lot of other things also too. I, I, I'm, you know, you have a client that can text you all hours. Um, there is a, I, I know on iPhone, there is a, an automatic reply that you can give people. Um, you know, I think that's with phone calls. Actually, you could do that with phone calls and I'm not sure if you could do a text, but you can actually just put it in notes and cut and paste and say, Hey, you've reached me off out of office hours. Um, you, um, I'm happy to speak with you, um, you know, our, on business hours and we, our business hours are usually Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then that's full sentence. And then that's it. Then they get it. And then, you know, especially sometimes it, I mean, depending on the person, they'll get it. I mean, they'll really get it. If they're, they're not understanding that, then that's probably a tougher conversation. But listen, tougher conversations are really, really, um, empowering because you're actually standing up for yourself. You're standing up for your, your business and you're standing up for your boundaries that need to be said. You know what I mean? It's really empowering when you can do that. And you're like, this is how we work. This is what we do. And we and want, want to invite people that have the same beliefs that we do in terms of, you know, body first, business is second. So, you know, I need to have time off because my, my head is always clicking with content. You know what I mean? And it needs a larger recharge than, uh, than most creative jobs need a lot of time to recharge a lot and people just don't get it. People don't understand it, but it's not your job to teach them either. So that is, well, it isn't, <laughs> you just have to do the boundary thing and it's not your job for them for, how do I say this? It's not your job to make them or give them the pathway to understand your boundary. You just have to put it there. That's all you need to do. That's, you don't owe anybody anything, okay? <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need them. There's more uh, great people to work with. You just have to convey it and, and do that. And I think a really good next uh, conversation eventually down the line is how do you attract customers that you really want to work with? Um, and we've, we've done it. We've done it. And it's taken a long time. Can I just tell you, I've been doing this since 2009 and it has been a rocky road, but I think that we do get those kind of, uh, spots where we're like, okay, we got it. This actually works for us. And I'll definitely share that with you, especially if you're a social media manager, we need you, we need you to promote and all be successful because in this next length, we have to create the wealth. We have to create the community that we really want. And I am totally here for it. 
So thank you so much for watching on our YouTube channel. And I'm going to put the link of the YouTube channel here if you want to watch this video or this, this podcast. Or otherwise, just keep listening here. Um, and we're on Spotify and iTunes. I'm sure we're on other platforms. I can't. Oh, Google Play also. But um, we're here for you. So if you have any questions, I'm also going to put the link of my um, Instagram. So if you have a question or you want to submit a question for our podcast, just give us a, a you know, a DM, a, a voicemail DM through Instagram, and we'll be happy to do it. So there you go. I'm going to go say goodbye for now, and we will see you on our next podcast.